Azinge. Um, Prof has been so wonderful, and Prof has uh, uh, has joined us even uh, before. Of course, the four club he's been here. He's been throughout the preparation and all the planning. He's been with us. So, Prof, we want to welcome you. Prof is a um, senior advocate of Nigeria. Um, he's um, a, a national awardee of the Office of the Order of the Niger, and uh, he's also an electoral judge of the Commonwealth uh, Arbitral Tribunal in London, and uh, he's very grounded here in Nigeria um, as uh, the President General of the Asaba Development Union worldwide. So, Professor Espanya Zinge, we know this is uh, just a super summary of uh, the colossus that you are, but we want to thank you very much for joining us today and uh, agreeing to chair uh, this occasion. And we uh, thank and appreciate you. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, I'm glad to be here. Yes, uh, we also have uh, a number of other uh, important uh, persons who are here with us. Um, because of time, uh, we will also just call through um, these uh, personalities um, quickly. So um, I will leave the keynote speaker for last because he would um, take over uh, once we are done with the introduction and other aspects of our program. So we have also with us um, um, what we're talking about today is related to development of young persons uh, to uh, new media, or what we call social media, and um, to some of the new things, uh, new tools that we are using um, um, that weren't available uh, 25 years ago. So we have uh, a youth ambassador with us, some policy analyst. He's a very special person uh, at home, actually, in uh, in most states. He's uh, Akwarandu, um, Ike, I call him Akwarandu, AIC. Akwarandu, Akwarandu is the, um, he, the, the, he used to be, or he is, uh, the special assistant, senior special assistant to uh, the governor emeritus of the uh, Imo State, uh, Nakai Hedioha. Um, he is a very savvy new media um, uh, uh, user and actor. He is an influencer uh, on uh, social media and one of the emerging voices uh, in that space in uh, the southeast and uh, he's also the executive director of Focal Digital Media. So uh, he's also good to say that. Uh, we also have uh, joining us. Um, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome, Ike. We also have joining us uh, uh, His Royal Majesty uh, Igwe uh, Nemeka Achebe. Uh, who is the uh, royal father of today? He's the OB of Onicha. And uh, he uh, is uh, also a very, a very yeah. Yeah. So we welcome His Royal Majesty. We also have um, um, Dame, Dame Yom Josephine Aneni, who is the president of the uh, president of the Nkata, Nkata Ndi Yomibo. Uh, she's the mother of the day, and we welcome her as well. <laughs> we also have uh, with, um, His Lordship, Most Reverend uh, Professor J. Honor, who is the Catholic Bishop of Umsuka Diocese, and who will be the father of the day today. Also joining us uh, are many of our key uh, partners. Uh, we have uh, Dr. Jude, Judy Homer, who is um, the senior um, and the technical coordinator uh, and director of uh, the NBC Policy Roundtable, the NPR, and he has been wonderful. He put together the entire uh, Zoom platform that we are using today. So you can see that the media cuts across uh, all ages and uh, all, all the uh, professions. He's a medical doctor and we appreciate him. We also uh, have him joining us. Uh, Professor Binika Agulana, um, at LSM. Uh, she is uh, an academician and um, uh, professor at the Imo State University and uh, dean, one-time dean of both education and student 
affairs in that university. We also have uh, the former Inspector General of Police, uh, uh, Mike, uh, uh, Dr. Mike Okiro uh, of the KSJ International. Uh, he's very well known in the country for um, the role he played um, as an, an IG of police and also leading the police service uh, commission, which uh, he only recently handed over to handle. And we have uh, Chief uh, Sa uh, Na Wodo, um, KSJ I as well, who is um, President General of Ohana and Ibo. Um, he needs no introduction. Uh, of course, Ohana is the um, uh, overarching uh, uh, body of all Ibo. Uh, but um, societies and organizations, they oversee all that uh, we do. In addition, we have um, uh, other persons, um, the editor-in-chief of Elomba.com joining us. And uh, we also have um, Dr. Victor Chilaka, uh, who is also the study of the international liaison of the uh, NBC indigenous. Uh, they are a very important partner to the Professor Only Foundation. Um, they started uh, working with us. We set up a scholarship for um, a university undergraduates in Nigeria in honor of Professor Only. And that scholarship has been going on now for um, almost for half about half a decade. So uh, we appreciate you and uh, we welcome you. Uh, Dr. Victor Chiraka. Yes. And we have many other uh, distinguished uh, personalities. Uh, and uh, as I said, I will keep the best for last. I would like to uh, do the first summary or cursory introduction of our guest speaker, uh, who is uh, a great leader and a great scholar as well. Uh, he's none other than Professor uh, Prince, Eddie. Apology. Um, his profile says that he's a U.S.-based uh, biopharma executive, but uh, Prof goes beyond that title. Prof wears so many hats. Uh, prof is uh, a very active uh, community mobilizer. He's a very ardent, uh, you know, supporter, supporter of good governance courses around the world, and uh, he's also one of the key arrowheads of uh, the democracy democracy that we have today and enjoy today uh, in Nigeria, uh, being a former um, um, uh, fourth four leading person of the Nadeko movement. So Prof is also an awardee of uh, Profound, the Prof. Only Foundation, uh, one of the leading awardees, and uh, he will be a guest speaker today. He has a range of experience across various platforms um, and, um, and in the media, etc., and various industries as well. Uh, he's trained as a pharmacist, but of course, he's currently uh, in corporate world of the pharmacy of the pharmaceutical industry today. So, Prof, you're welcome. Uh, we thank you for accepting to give this uh, uh, this lecture. Uh, Prof is also, uh, of course, a member of the family, and we're very proud of you. Sir. So thank you very much. Um, so, quickly, we. Um, want to especially appreciate all and everyone the, who have, who have uh, come in um, or who have logged on to this uh, special eighth and first Zoom online uh, memorial lecture of Professor Theo young um, We want to especially also recognize members of the family. We want to represent them um, um, just uh, recognize uh, the younger brother of Professor Ong Liri who is the Professor Festus uh, Onwuliri, is also on the call. want to uh, also appreciate other members of the family. Dr. Edward uh, Onwuliri is also on the call. And uh, many others are here as well. They, all the Onwuliris are here. I also want to appreciate my brothers and sisters who are also here. Uh, I can see my elder brother who is on the call as well. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Um, I would um, like to quickly move on with the items on the agenda. But before I do that, let me introduce myself. I'm Dr. Chinemarim Daniel Onwuliri. I'm a medical doctor practicing in Enugu, uh, Nigeria. And uh, I'm also happy to be uh, here uh, today to moderate, to serve as moderator of this uh, lecture. 
we hope to have a very engaging session where we'll start um, with, uh, we'll do, after these preliminaries, we'll have the opening prayer, and uh, after the opening prayer, we'll quickly move on to uh, get a few remarks from um, our most distinguished uh, chairman, uh, after which uh, we will talk, give a little background, um, or get a little background from the convener, who is uh, the uh, minister, honorable minister emeritus, and we will uh, proceed to um, talk about the foundation and the lecture will be hold on. These will take a few minutes, then we will now do tail into the main business of the day, uh, which is um, the, um, the lecture. Um, so we would have uh, Dr. Judy Homer doing a little introduction um, of the details of the yeah, well, yeah, we, we beg all of us to listen in. There will be room for questions and answers, uh, if we, and also contributions as well. Uh, it, it's always nice to mute your call if um, you want to have a side conversation while we are uh, with an opening prayer, which is customary um, in Ibo land. Um, so we'll invite uh, um, uh, Opera Prof, Ken uh, the only to give us uh, a, a word of prayer. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> thank you. Um, let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Lord and our God, we thank and praise you for the gift of life. We thank and praise you for the gift of family. We thank and praise you for the gift of being here to have this lecture. We thank and praise for everyone who has come in. We ask you to bless us, bless everyone here, bless our families, our jobs, our livelihoods, and bless our country, Nigeria. And bless the Igbo man, the Igbo nation, the Mbisi nation, and each and every one of us. And we pray that we continue to survive in this pandemic, continue to survive in this nation, and we'll continue to survive in everything we do. That will always give, have a cause to glorify your holy name, all this we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 Father, Son, Amen. Spirit. Amen. 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 Jesus, or not Mary. Thank you very much, um, Opera Moody, uh, I'm the only lady for uh, the prayer. Um, that was uh, very uh, important. So now that we have uh, called on God to direct our affairs, we will uh, move on to um, invite, in a special way, um, the chairman of today's uh, occasion, uh, Professor Tiffany Azinge, uh, who is uh, also a uh, uh, of the Knights of St. John International and uh, a senior advocate of Nigeria and uh, of uh, uh, the etc. So, so prof, prof, you're welcome. You have the floor to uh, go ahead. Thank you. Very much. Uh, uh, let me start with the protocols. The Royal Majesty Igwe Nemeka Achebe, Abu Gideobi of Onicha and Royal Father of the Day, the Father of the Day, and our Father in the Lord, Most Reverend PG Honor, Catholic Bishop of Onicha uh, Msoka Diocese, the Mother of the Day, E. Young Josephine Anini, our great and erudite guest speaker, Professor Prince E. D. Oparaji, an international scholar and human rights activist, our special guests of honor, Senator Enyin Nayabari, the minority leader of the Senate, Chief Sir John Nyamodo, the President General of Ohanes Ndibo, Sir Dr. Michael Kiro, former Inspector General of Police, also Knight of St. John, Professor Lady Gineka Gunlana, former Dean of Education in Su. Tim Elomba, Editor-in-Chief Elomba and Co. 
Dr. Judy Hama, Chief Program Director of the State Policy Roundtable. Our convener, Her Excellency Professor Lady Viola Muleri, former Supervising Minister of Foreign Affairs. Akwarandu, Akwarandu Policy Analyst and New Media Consultant. Our dear moderator, Dr. Chinemeran Dan Onwuleri, and other members of late Professor Celestine Onwuleri Foundation. Our esteemed participants and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I am indeed highly humbled by the invitation to chair the eighth Professor Celestine Onwuleri Memorial Lecture titled, The Role of Social Media in Human Capacity Development and in the Development of Iboland. My review of the last seven memorial lectures shows a consistent high standard of scholarly exposition and cross-cutting analysis of issues that are designed to impact our nation and our people positively. Permit me to commend our convener, Her Excellency, Professor Viola Omuleri and other members of the late Professor Sir Celestine Omuleri Foundation, profound, for establishing the foundation, nurturing it, and sustaining the objectives for which the foundation was established. Late Professor Sir Celestine Omuleri, KSJI, was well known to many of us. Here was a man whose enduring accomplishments span across different and varying spheres of human endeavor. He was an academic giant, administrative colossus, visionary leader, a noble knight of St. John's International, a devoted Catholic of notable spirituality, a man of the people whose footprints remain indelible in our landscape, a great family man, an illustrious son of Igbo land, and a highly patriotic Nigerian. Professor Muleri now belongs to the history of Nigeria, and has a place there in the Shalaba. Uh, I think um, we may have lost the uh, prof momentarily uh, due to the network. He will be back uh, on again. So let's. Uh... Let's sort out the, the technical uh, challenge with uh, the call. Okay, I think he's back on. So while we're waiting for Prof to come on, just uh, to go over uh, what we have on, um, after Prof is uh, uh, through with the opening remarks as the chairman, uh, we would uh, uh, proceed to introduce the guest lecturer and uh, proceed with the lecture in a couple of minutes. So, um, uh, but of course, remember that this is Zoom. Zoom has made life uh, a bit possible and easier but there will always be uh, one or two challenges, especially as we hash out uh, 3, 4G, 5G, and uh, beyond. So we also appeal for uh, your understanding. Uh, yeah. so I think Prof, uh, I'm back. Prof, you're welcome. Thank yeah. you. I'm sorry for that. Hello? Go on, Prof. Yeah, Prof, go ahead, go ahead Prof. Okay. Yes. I'm sorry about that intervention. Please, uh, that's, that's, that's right. I was saying that Professor Muleri now belongs to the history of Nigeria and has a place there in that shall abide for all time. Whatever the criterion, 
Professor Muleri was a great man and has a, an abiding place in the history of this nation. In the public life of Nigeria, Professor Muleri was an example of conscientiousness, thoroughness, complete devotion to duty, and above all, of the highest standard of integrity. His mental power and fertility, the sheer quality of his personality and intellectual drive impressed itself on all those who came in contact with him. So today we are gathered to celebrate this outstanding scholar by this memorial lecture. I have no doubt that our guest speaker, by virtue of his intimidating credentials, is eminently equipped to treat us to an intellectual feast. On behalf of the convener and profound, I want to welcome our royal father of the day, our father in the Lord, our mother of the day, our special guests of honor, and indeed all participants that have joined to give honor to an eminent son of Africa and a citizen of the world. Let me hope that in the course of our conversation, there will be enough time for participants to weigh in and make necessary interventions on the subject matter. I wish us a very wonderful conversation and a fruitful outcome. May the soul of Professor Sir Celeste Dongulari continue to rest in perfect peace. May his, me may his memory be a blessing. I thank you all for your attention. Thank, thank you very much, um, Professor Stefania Zinge, for the wonderful opening remarks. Uh, we continue to uh, appreciate you for um, how you have uh, eulogized and um, given a lot of insight into um, Prof. Uh, late dad. Uh, we, without wasting any further uh, time or do, we will proceed to invite Dr. Judy Homer, uh, who is uh, director of the MBC Policy Roundtable to introduce, uh, uh, give us the profile of our guest speaker, uh, Professor Eddie Oporogy, so that we can also proceed with the business of the day. Thank you, sir. Dr. Judy, you're welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Um, again, uh, I welcome greetings and I welcome everybody to the eighth Professor C.O.E. on the Memorial Lecture today. Um, I will stand on the existing protocol that has been well established by our chairman, uh, our professor, who is a, a distinguished chairman. So I will stand on the on the on the protocol that we have uh, eloquently established. Uh, my name is Dr. Judy Homer, and I'm the chief program director of Umbisa Policy Roundtable. Uh, of which uh, our guest speaker, Professor Edward Oporoji, is our able chairman. NPR is the premier eminent business policy round policy and business council, entirely focused on the development of MBC, and which our uh, late brother, Professor Omonere's life really exhibited throughout his life. I don't need to read um, all professor's profile. I think he's known, uh, but I have to say that um, not only that he's a pharmacy professor emeritus, everybody knows that he's an international scholar. He's an executive here in the United States with the pharmaceutical companies. But most importantly, he is a fearless advocate for the human rights. He fights like a lion and has a heart of a lamb. And I'm happy and honored to be his friend and call him his friend. 
So Professor Poroji, I'm very, very happy to be your friend, to fight along with you because you are a trusted brother and a friend. So I am pleased, join me in welcoming our 2020 guest speaker to the eighth Professor CEO on Wolders Memorial Lecture, Professor Prince Edward Oparoji. Prof, unmute yourself. Thank you. We all have to get used to Zoom one sometime in our lifetime. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ihoma. Um, I want to say thank you also to the moderator. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the convener, uh, for this uh, rare uh, opportunity and honor uh, to be the guest uh, presenter uh, in this uh, very, very prestigious occasion. I want to also uh, say thank you to the chairman uh, for a very uh, eloquent uh, introduction uh, that uh, will definitely, I'm sure, because of uh, the limited time we have, um, a whole lot more can be said uh, in addition. But um, at this point in time, I will say that I also stand on existing uh, protocol uh, in recognizing uh, the wealth and breadth of uh, the uh, headliners in this uh, uh, conference, as well as uh, all the attendees. Um, the topic we have today is uh, something that I believe uh, also plays uh, squarely into the mindset and how Professor Pro, uh, uh, Professor Ogmolary, you know, lived his life. He is not somebody that gives to excuses. Professor Ogmolary believes that you ought to be at any point in time, be able to take control of your destiny. And if you knew him when he was alive, there is nothing that uh, you will bring to uh, Professor Ogmolary and say, hey, um, can you do this? Do you have the expertise to do this? And he'll tell you, no, he doesn't do that. Rather, he will go back, walk at it. And when he comes back to you with a response, you will know that uh, he really is somebody who does not take uh, uh, imperfection at all. So uh, today, what we are trying to do, he said, look at the environment we found ourselves and see what can we as individuals and what can we as a people do to make sure that uh, the environment that we find ourselves uh, do not crush us for lack of, uh, for lack of uh, uh, preparedness. So uh, this topic today is something that is very germane and very, very dear to some of our lives. Well, my name, my name, my name, say my name more. My name they come out of. Now the topic of today, like I said, the role of system uh, in human capacity. Is, <laughs> is there a way to mute everybody so that uh, um, they are speaking now? Yeah. So, um, then you can just uh, unmute me. Uh, Prof, unmute yourself. Okay. So um, the topic of today is the role of social media in human capacity development and the development of uh, Igbo land. Like I started saying, even though the concept of social media cannot be said to be an entirely new phenomenon, it is apt to say that the 21st century in the 21st century, it has become the most important technological innovation that has shaped human interaction and communication. 
in our age and time, the social media, or what many may call the new media, has become significantly revolutionized in such a way that social relations, not just among individuals, but also among communities, have been trem tremendously impacted. The social media, the, the social, the use of social media has skyrocketed over the past decade and a half. Whereas only 5% of adults in the United States reported using social media in, the platform, uh, in 2005, that number now hovers around 70%. And among the teenagers, it's even much higher, hovers around 81%. And more than a third reports that every third report that uh, they use even social media sites multiple times an hour, not just the multiple sites an hour. So it's a very prevalent uh, mode of communication among the youths. These statistics, these statistics have risen dramatically over the past six years, likely driven, driven by increased access to mobile devices, growth in the number of people who use Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat, and other social media platforms, and the time spent on them has garnered interest and concern among policymakers, teachers, parents, clinicians about the impact of social media in our lives. That said, it's even more compelling when you look at the fact that Facebook, the largest social media platform in the world, has about 2.4 billion users. In 2020, over 3.6 billion people were using social media worldwide. The number projected to increase to almost 4.41 billion in 2025. These are huge numbers, especially when juxtaposed with the world population of about 7.7 .7 billion people. No wonder one will realize and say for sure that no matter what anyone thinks, unless you probably are so naive about it, the social media has changed the world. We live in this world and we definitely have to know how to navigate in it. The rapid and vast adoption of these technologies is changing how we access information, connect with friends and families, and how we organize to demand social and political changes. One is persuaded to assume that the rapid revolution and evolution of the social media may have been driven not just by the rapid advances in digital technology, but more by the compelling need of man to communicate in a more efficient and effective way and in real time. It is this capacity of the social media to effectively and efficiently mediate communication in real time that has recalibrated its impact on human capacity development, as well as the development of communities. In real terms, the social media is a form of mass media. The Merriam-Webster Dictionary has defined this form of mass media as forms of electronic communication through which users create online communities to share information, ideas, personal messages, and other contents such as videos. As stated, earlier, as stated earlier, common social media platforms include Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, Snapchat, and Twitter. If you're on this call and you don't know any of this, you're in trouble. Many perspectives have been evoked on how this form of communication has transformed human capacity and development in our time. On one side are those suggesting that the social media has done more harm than good because of the difficulty in regulating its content. However, there are those who argue that the social media has stimulated human capacity development and therefore can drive the development of any society, including the Igbo land. Thus, the aim of my presentation here today is to explore the role of the social media in human capacity development from the standpoint of using such internet-based avenues of information exchange, news, knowledge, and skills 
in capacity building and also how this capacity can be deployed in the development of the Igbo homeland. In doing this, this paper will attempt to establish a nexus between the application of social media and development. A little bit overview on uh, what is actually human capacity development. The question of societal development has always been linked to the painstaking harmonization of the inherent capacities of people living in that society. Relying on the assumption, scholars have argued that from the dawn of history, individuals and communities have always tried to drive their development process by identifying, developing, and utilizing the various capabilities of its people for sustainable development. What this means is that different people in the society have different capacities which must be harnessed for the overall benefit of that society. In truth, in whatever form we contextualize the development process of society, the end points always the end point always is to meet the expectation of the people in terms of enhancing the standard of living and helping the drive to drive the development uh, process. Put into proper perspective, the foregoing indicates that effective human capacity development is the engine room of progressive development. In other words, when we talk about the development of any society, we are not merely talking about structures we are basically referring to the progressive realization of the capacities, abilities, and talents of each individual in the society for their own satisfaction and enhancement of the good of the community at large. The implication of this is that no society can ignore the continuous improvement of the skills, knowledge base, education, competencies, and the strategic alignment of these people, communities, businesses, and other institutions to national development without a concerted effort to effective human capacity building and development. This is asynchronous for an all-round sustainable development. So what is capacity building or capacity development? Capacity building or capacity development can be defined as a process by which individuals and organizations obtain, improve, or retain the skills, knowledge, knowledge, tools, equipment, and other resources needed to do their job competently. Such capacity building or development gives individual members of the society the latitude to perform their task with greater efficiency and capacity. According to the UNDP, capacity building is the creation of an enabling environment with appropriate policy and legal frameworks, individual development, including community participation, human resources development, and the strengthening of managerial systems. It is the elements that give fluidity, flexibility, functionality of a community to adapt to changing needs of the population that it serves. On its own, the Ford Foundation has also defined capacity building as a process of developing and strengthening the skills, instincts, abilities, processes, and resources that organizations and communities need to survive, adapt, and or thrive in the fast changing world. And basically, capacity building encompasses all aspects of awareness raising, education and training, attitude change confidence building, participation in decision making and action. A critical goal of human capacity development is that of maximizing people's potential to contribute to development by participating fully in all its activities. Through capacity building individuals and groups are empowered to expand their abilities to fully participate in the development process. So now, how does this all fit into what we're talking about in the development of Igbo land? In the, early, in the earlier sections of this talk, I defined capacity building or capacity development as expanding one's existing level of knowledge, skill, and information to accommodate current and future adjustment needs. We argued 
that capacity building involves strengthening the knowledge base, abilities, skills, and behavior of individuals and improving institutional structures and process in such a way that individuals, organizations, and communities can efficiently meet their aspirations and goals in a sustainable manner. If the foregoing assertions are, called, are relied upon, then we can state categorically that the social media and its associated internet-based frontiers can be effectively deployed in the development process of any community, including the land. <clears throat> it is in this connection that we can talk about the social media as an agency for the development of Igbo homeland. There is no doubt that several groups, communities, organizations have leveraged on the positive sides of the social media in their development process. And the essence of our discussion today is to explore ways that we can deploy the social media in the develop development of our own political and social space. It is given that Igbo people are very enterprising with the capacity to make something out of nothing. The Igbo are the only group in Nigeria that has the capacity to invest and create a home outside the Igbo homeland. The Igbo are, may be accused of being fiercely individualistic, but nobody can deny their creativity, industry, and ingenuity. So that said, social media can be used for the development of Igbo land in the following ways. Let's take education. Given the enterprising, the Igbo enterprising and innovative spirit, a structured application of social media can be impactful on education development. For example, distant and online learning and exchange of information have so blossomed that many seem to think that everything in education is now possible through internet, and maybe it is, if well structured strategically. It has become fashionable for scholars and academics to share research experiences, ideas, and professional information through these avenues, be they open access or password required platforms. The Igbo intelligentsia can leverage on this for technological development of Igbo land. The speed and reach of this media and the comfort of access joined with the volume of information available at a click unquestionably fascinates, uh, fascinates every connected person. Information access through these avenues contribute to the capacity building at such level as self-help uh, self skills, social skills, work-related skills, and general problem solving through provision of solutions to simple and or very serious questions. These technologies have been, you know, been put in place in other parts of the world. And I'm sure that uh, all that we need is uh, some strategic alignment and uh, you know, we can also do the same. Uh, in China today, they are developing what they call smart classrooms. And uh, smart classrooms, a teacher can be, or a classroom can have uh, students from all across China keen into a classroom for a lecture. So it becomes some a classroom without boundaries. This, this student may access this classroom instruction from their dormitories, from their you know, restaurant, wherever they are, they can be in this smart classroom. And there's, you know, why one would not say that we can jump to get there, but I know we have the uh, technology, technological manpower, know-how, or to be creative, you know, in uh, providing uh, acceptable and qualitative education for our people. The other areas where we can also look at the social media, so rethinking and repurposing uh, online Igbo communities. There's no question that uh, there are so many Igbo communities that are out on WhatsApp, on Facebook, other social media platforms, and uh, in their different ways, they are, they are serving different purposes and different needs. It's uh, quite recommendable. But one thing that uh, we have not done well, how we can now expand and coordinate all these various uh, entities 
into one global uh, formidable uh, project oriented uh, you know, team. And I know that uh, Hannes and Debo has uh, been working and trying hard in this direction. And uh, it's something that uh, you know, must uh, be commended and uh, more effort needs to be uh, put uh, in those uh, areas. So it is important that uh, we begin to align our resources wherever we can find them uh, to uh, solve our unmet uh, needs. The other area where we can uh, uh, apply you know, social media is increasing political mobilization among the Igbo population. Social media networks are increasingly becoming a critical component of civil, civil, civic, civic engagement and ideal mode of uh, communication. They generate visual discourse among friends, acquaintances, groups with similar aspirations and with whoever shares one's common interest. There is no gain saying that the fact that various social media networks have helped our people perform the crucial function of keeping in touch with people from around the world. They also connect with distant, other, distant others, including leaders and policymakers who are otherwise not easily reachable by any other means. So the social media is crucial for the political mobilization and development of Ebola. And some of us, some of you or some of us who are on social media or some of you are on Twitter, you'll find out that sometimes some of our, our political leaders or social influencers, uh, you cannot uh, you know, make an, uh, an appointment to see them in the office and uh, you are lucky. But uh, easily on social media, you can engage these people and uh, you know, make some headway in advocating for a cause or the other. All social media, social media can be applied in expanding the frontiers of a social mobilization. This is the process of bringing together allies to raise awareness of and demand for a particular program to assist in the delivery of the resources and services and to strengthen community participation for sustainability and self-reliance. Such allies include decision and policy makers, like I mentioned earlier, opinion leaders, NGOs, such as professional and religious groups, the media, the private sector, generates dialogue, negotiation, and consensus, engaging a range of players in interrelated, on complementary uh, efforts, taking into account the need of people uh, across uh, different cultural bounds. Ndibu can leverage on the social media for such social mobilization. Other areas that this can also be very viable is in deployment of social media, the deployment of social media for Igbo economic growth. In an increasingly economic connected world, the public's demand for quick, concise updates on pressing issues grows every day. Just a decade ago, government agencies and communities did not use social network to engage with the public. Many platforms did not exist and those that did were used for social interaction alone. But that has changed. Social media networks have become a legitimized form of communication that strengthens connections between public sector entities and the constituents they serve. The United States government through the Trade and Development Agency has deployed the social media to maximum effect to promote economic growth. Igbo communities within and outside Nigeria can also employ the social media in this manner to drive our internal and external economic growth. I will say, like mentioned earlier, that uh, various you know, small groups uh, of uh, Igbo origin uh, abound everywhere, whether it be it on WhatsApp, on Facebook, or other social media. And uh, they do serve some good purpose um, that you know, can continue to uh, uh, expand, again, uh, put together a global strategy uh, for moving our economic uh, frontiers uh, will be one thing that uh, we can explore for these uh, various entities. Um, increasing accessibility to healthcare service in Ebola is also another veritable area where we can uh, 
to use uh, social media. It is now a known fact that the social media is assisting in those small measures improving accessibility to healthcare services and in particular counseling. Available evidence shows that this is more so for less complex procedures. If it is given that health is wealth, then we must take the health of our people seriously. And one way of keeping people informed of new trends in the medical field is through the social media. We cannot develop without a healthy population. Therefore, the use of social media to inform and educate our people in this area cannot be overemphasized. Again, everything that we talked about here means there's gonna be a unified strategy, overarching strategy that gives every Igbo entity human being a direction. We already have a general direction when uh, it was say, Akurulo. Akurulo, I don't know who, who framed it, but uh, it's uh, an overarching uh, uh, an, an overarching strategy that- uh, Well, back to God's finger, yeah. So, people like uh, Abadumisikari and who so um, Akurula, whoever phrased it, I think it has to be a has given us at least a basic framework from which you know to deploy all other you know, sub strategies and tactics you know to you know, uh, maximize and uh, invigorate uh, the development of uh, Ebolan, including the healthcare sector. In a country as polarized as Nigeria with multifaceted problems, our people need, to need the skills of health professionals as well as their experiences and expertise to give vital information necessary for the people to, go, uh, to take good decisions concerning their health. The other area is uh, using the social media for technology transfer. The internet has become so integrated to such an extent that new innovations are daily emerging on the internet. This is one way the transfer of technology can occur. The Igbo are very innovative people and the guided application of social media could be one sure way of assessing and applying new technologies for the development of Igbo life. Going into conclusion, in this presentation, we have tried to examine the issue of social media, human capacity development, and deploying social media for the development of Iboland. The thesis of this paper is that through the social media, is that though the social media is not a new phenomenon, but it has become so revolutionized in our time in such a way that it has altered the way we communicate. Despite the usual criticisms of social media, there is no gain saying that the fact that its impact, that its impact on human capacity development is enormous, especially in its interactivity capacity to build virtual communities and real-time reportage of issues. Basically, the social media has created several avenues for better and more functional human capacity building mechanisms, and to that extent can contribute to the development of society. It was based on this foregoing that we examine how the social media can be deployed in the development trajectory of Fiboland. And we have noted that if the social media is constructively used by our people, it can be used, it can be of great value in developing education in Iboland, help in creation, uh, with an integrated virtual Ibo community around the world, recalibrate our political and social mobilization processes help in economic growth, access to healthcare services, and even driving transfer of technology. To that extent, we cannot but agree that social media is relevant to the development of Igbo land. I thank you for listening. Thank you very much, Prof. Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs>
Thank you very much. Um, uh, that was uh, a fantastic um, um, uh, lecture, and uh, you know a lot of uh, new insights. And um, there's a lot that you have uh, powered through in you know record that time. So, Prof, we want to thank you for um, your uh, insights. We want to thank you for sharing. Uh, your scholarly insights, and uh, you have raised a lot of important, you know, issues. You've talked about some of the native strength of uh, the Igbo man of uh, of Igbos with uh, ingenuity and creativity. You talked about uh, uh, the innate capacity that Igbos have shown the world over to build a homeland and also to build other homelands outside their own homeland and the range of capacities that Igbos continue to uh, depict wherever they find themselves. And uh, you went into the strengths of social media, of social media and the various platforms, and of course, the weaknesses and some of the issues that uh, are being raised with regard to government and regulation of social media and some of the more recent things we're seeing around the world trying to curb uh, some of the impact social media is having governance. You raised some important points around governance and the way the physical uh, uh, form of uh, governmental engagement had failed in the past where most political leaders were clearly unavailable to their constituents. But, but with the onset of um, social media, it's possible to actually engage with them to an extent because they also want to engage with their people and uh, it can be done on a virtual basis. You talked about used in education with smart rooms uh, as well and of course issues around healthcare access and counseling and mental health services that has become very right um, on social media uh, and in fact the go-to place for most persons who need uh, these services and it needs to be expanded because for us to have uh, they said health is wealth but these days from what you have shown us health is everything so if we can actually build a healthy population we can actually achieve the sort of development we are looking for. Of course, you uh, detailed into technology transfer, which I think is one area that a lot of young people continue to uh, uh, leverage social media for um, by interacting with their peers uh, in other parts of the world uh, to learn um, some of the uh, new technologies that may be, uh, be uh, on u in use or being applied in those parts of the world. So, prop. Um, I think uh, it has been a fantastic uh, one, and um, we are all applauding uh, you. So thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. We um, have been sitting for about an hour, and as uh, health uh, professionals and, uh, uh, in a, and as persons who understand um, the circulation within the human body, we want to encourage everybody to stand up for uh, a few seconds and stretch so that we don't have any deep venous uh, thrombosis or any thromboembolic, uh, God forbid, event.